Would you please welcome John Finnemore? Poor old Nick Griffin, eh? <laughs> Doesn't your heart just go out to the big sad races, teddy bear? <laughs> Six months ago, the proud leader of the BNP, now expelled from the party for being too erratic and disruptive. <laughs> In response, Nick Griffin has said he is going to ignore their plastic gangster games. I don't know, Nick. I think maybe join in with the plastic gangster games. <laughs> they sound fairly harmless. To be honest, if the BNP became a society that met up after school every Wednesday to paint and swap their little plastic Al Capones, I'd be fine with them. <laughs> Hell, I might even join. <laughs> you, you've got to keep an open mind, that's the thing. Similarly, before I heard all the facts about David Cameron's big conference speech tax cut pledges, I'm afraid to say I reacted with, with some confusion. I'd heard Osborne tell conference austerity was still with us, and then I heard Cameron say that he was committed to balancing the books by 2018, and that though, as he intelligently observed, 25 billion was a lot of money, finding it was doable. Well, this is good news, I thought. The Prime Minister has a plan. Tell us more. Ah, tax. Yes, £7 billion worth of tax rises. Well, it's courageous, so close to an election, but I can see it. I'm sorry, what? Tax cuts. OK, so your plan to find £25 billion is to spend £7 billion. <laughs> when I realised that one of the people who'd pay less tax under these proposals is me. <laughs> you know, on this occasion, I think the Conservatives might be onto something. <laughs> yeah, I, I think it's important, uh, even on a satirical show like this, that we applaud a good idea when we hear it. <laughs> And I have to say, there's something about this policy of giving me 500 quid a year which I like. <laughs> I, I can't put my finger on it exactly, it, it just has to smack of good governance. <laughs> but my own naked greed aside, I also genuinely like the idea of scrapping tax for minimum wage earners. I liked it when the Lib Dems first came up with it. And I like it now that it's been taken up by a party that might conceivably actually do it. <laughs> but of course, it all depends on where the money comes from. And the Prime Minister was very clear on that. I know that he was very clear on that because the Education Secretary, Nicky Morgan, said so on PM about 18 times. And indeed, I suppose he was clear in that he didn't say a single word about it. It was certainly impossible to misunderstand him. <laughs> And Nikki Morgan was similarly clear herself. She said... We will identify £25 billion of further savings. It's going to come from savings, which is a relief, because for a second there I was worried it might be cuts. And uh, what will these savings be, Nikki Morgan? They will be identified. Fair enough, they'll be identified, will they? What, we'll, we'll know them when we see them. I, I'm sorry, is this, is this supposed to be a treasure hunt? It, are you giving us the first clue? If £25 billion ye seek, look for a bird with a curious beak. <laughs> if you only tell us the good news and not the price, you're not setting out your stall to the electorate, you're just someone shouting, Hey, guys, who likes money? <laughs> Contrast this, of course, with the firm... Statesmanlike, prudent, yet audacious plan for the economy, which was laid out with such consummate skill by Ed Miliband. <laughs> or would have been if it hadn't been one of the bits he forgot. <laughs> Afterwards, he told the BBC... If I did the speech again today, I'd do it differently. <laughs> really, Ed, would you? You surprised me. What would you do differently? Oh, say all of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I suppose if you're going to be a total perfectionist, then actually telling the nice ladies and gentlemen all the things would represent the absolute cherry on the cake of competence, yes. <laughs> but then, as Ed explained... One of the perils of delivering a speech without a script is not remembering every detail. Yeah, not every single pesky detail like the economy. <laughs> But thank God he didn't forget a single detail about his riveting story about meeting a software engineer called Gareth, because that was all gold. <laughs> now, you might argue that this is just another of those unfortunate but basically trivial mishaps that seem to befall Mr Miliband six or seven times a day. <laughs> but I, I think, actually, this one is a bit different from his everyday misadventures bumping into lampposts or falling into wedding cakes or whatever. Because 
this was a failure on his own terms and in his own territory. You see, I sort of bought into his speech he made in July about how, yes, he's funny-looking and funny-sounding and can't eat a bacon sandwich without safety goggles, <laughs> a cordoned off exclusion zone, but none of this matters because he's such an amazing policy wonk and passionate political genius. But you can't make that case and then forget to mention the economy in your keynote conference speech, particularly when, and this is the bit that really infuriates me, no one asked you to memorise it. <laughs> if forgetting details is one of the perils of giving a speech without a script, here's a cunning little device that might help you out. A script! <laughs> Cameron delivered his behind a massive lectern, piled with scripts, two autocues, and doubtless in the wings an emergency backup copy stapled to Michael Gove. <laughs> two. Setting yourself an unnecessary, showy-off challenge of delivering your speech off script and then crucially failing to be able to do it isn't just a matter of not looking like a Prime Minister, which is arguably trivial. It's not acting like a Prime Minister, which is a bit more serious. So who does that leave me to vote for? Although not necessarily against tax cuts, I'm, I'm not prepared to give the Tories a blank cheque to take whatever they see fit in order to pay for them, because that's how people wake up in ice baths without their kidneys. <laughs> But nor am I inspired to vote for a man who explicitly instructs us to judge him on substance, not style, and then is sorry, sir, but he thinks he's left part of his essay on the bus. <laughs> so I suppose I will just have to wait for the Lib Dem conference next week and hope to be inspired by Nick Clegg. <laughs> Or I could just go and play plastic gangster games with Nick Griffin, which appeals just about as much. <laughs> oh, and I've just realised I haven't even mentioned UKIP. Good night. Yeah. <laughs>